Hey guys, what's happening? Thanks for tuning in and coming back and watching. I appreciate it. Hope your day is going really well. I'm in Luminar 4 today, and this is a deep dive video on the black and white conversion filter. Now, I'm a big color guy at heart. If you've seen any of my videos, and hopefully you have, if not, please do subscribe. Check out my videos. Don't hesitate to give this video a thumbs up if you like it. Uh, let YouTube know that you like the kind of stuff I'm putting out here. But um, if you've seen any of my previous videos, you'll know I love my colors. I mean, I just adore color. I think in color. I see in color, of course. Uh, but all my photos are mostly in color. But I gotta admit, I've, I've got a thing going. I'm having a moment with monochromes and black and whites. And, you know, I have to also admit that in the past, I only used black and white when I just the photo looked like crap in color, just to be honest. So I'd go make my photo, I'd do all these edits, and then I'd be like, God, I just, nah, just kind of, I don't know, it's not that interesting. And so I just, you know, saturation to negative 100 or whatever, um, and, uh, you know, convert it to black and white, and, huh, hey, that's not bad. And so that was how I thought of black and whites. But there are endless uh, options in terms of being creative and doing things different in monochromes that uh, you can't really do in color. And I actually find that you can get away with more uh, in terms of like pushing the sliders and making more dramatic and kind of sort of over the top edits that in color would be like total like barfarama. You'd be like, oh, that's just horrible. But that same thing done in black and white looks pretty cool. And so um, I've, I've got some ideas for you here I wanna share with you. So here's the photo and black and white conversion is over here in the essentials tab. And as the name implies, you click convert to black and white and there it is. Um, and I have to admit, for the longest time, uh, as I said, I used it only when color didn't work. And I thought you converted to black and white and you were done. And hopefully it looked good and maybe you changed some contrast. But there's so much more you can do. So let me, let me give you some ideas, which for me, a deep dive video is about, you know, here's how the tool works or the filter. I still call them filters. Um, and here's some ideas. It's not a true workflow walkthrough um, of here's what I would do to this specific photo. So in other words, this specific photo in color, New York City on the High Line. Um, I have it because it's got a wide variety of color in it. You got a lot of blue in the sky. You got some orangey red on this building. And you got some yellow here on these uh, this grass. Um, and that's gonna come into play. So convert to black and white. And in the old days, I thought I was done except for maybe some contrast, uh, maybe some highlights and shadows, but it's not even close. So here's the thing. You've got two things you can do, luminance or saturation. Saturation, I'll start there, of course, allows you to bring back some of that color. So if you want to do a slightly colorized photo, something like that, you can use uh, saturation sliders to do that. If you pull up the yellow, you'll get some more of that grass and it'll kick up a little bit that building. But that actually just likes, looks like a slightly desaturated photo, which is kind of what it is. Um, so saturation sliders, you know, each of these represents those colors and you can just slide them, you know, to, uh, to your heart's content. But for me, the real power here is in the luminance sliders. And these give you a lot of control. So remember, if I unconvert to black and white, you've got orangey red here and yellow here. And the orange red uh, up there and the yellow here, they, they, they have a lot of overlap in terms of the red and the yellow luminance sliders. So you'll see that in a minute. And then the blue, of course, is primarily in this sky. So let me go back to make it a black and white. Let me start with the red. So you can take the luminance down and you can see that building gets darker and then take the yellow down, it gets a little bit darker and the grass gets darker too. And so what you're doing is you're basically creating more contrast in the image. So if I take that back to normal, it's a little bit less of a contrasted image. And if I take these back down, contrast is the difference between the brighter parts and the darker parts. I'm just creating more dark parts, therefore I'm creating more contrast. Now conversely, you can drag them all the way to the right and those areas will get a lot brighter. But here's the thing, um, you wanna create a higher contrast image, you've got blue as well. So blue, remember that's the sky. If I take it to the right, I start to get this crazy blown out sky, which truthfully doesn't look that bad. But if I go to the left, I start getting a darker sky. And if I brightened the orangey red, uh, yellow, if you will, the red, yellow, and then dark and the blue, I'm starting to get a bit more of a contrasty image, which I think is pretty cool. So there's the original and there's the current state. Now, here's where I recommend, um, you know, if you've got your base photo set in black and white conversion, there are a lot of other tools that you can use to go get creative and do some really fun stuff in Luminar. So the first one, of course, is light. And the thing you're gonna think is contrast, highlights, and shadows. Absolutely, first thing I thought, 
Second thing I thought, third thing I thought. That's like the first 25 things I thought, but there's more. Uh, so smart contrast, right? You can just drag that to the right and you can see you're getting a little bit of a contrast to image. Um, you know how that works, right? So I'm gonna put that back at zero. Highlights, I can increase. In this case, I'd probably decrease. Uh, and shadows, again, increase or decrease, right? As I go to left, darken or deepen those shadows, getting more contrast. I could take the highlights that way. Uh, I could even uh, take contrast that way. Uh, maybe even bump up the exposure a little bit and you start to get a different look to the photo. But I'm gonna hit reset on that. Now it's gonna reset, you saw how different that is. Remember, the black and white is done down here. So it's staying black and white because I didn't reset that filter. But remember I was playing with the blues down here uh, and I made the blues negative 100 in luminance, right? So guess what else adjusts the blues? Temperature does. So if I take temperature to the left, I start getting a really dark sky. That's pretty cool. And then if I pull up some shadows and stuff, you can see you can really start getting some different kind of creative things. By the way, you can also go the other way. Whoa, uh, let me hit shadows back to normal. Um, if I take the temperature to the right, right, that sky starts getting um, brighter. So I'm gonna hit reset there. Tint uh, will also do that, right? So as I change the tint to the left, I'm getting more of that greenish. And as I go on this way, I'm getting that darker sky. So again, that's something to think about. In addition, down here, endless options. You have whites and blacks, right? So there goes whites, uh, you know, left or right, and same with blacks, left or right. And um, don't even get me started on the tone curve. You can do the same thing here. You can increase, uh, change contrast, do a lot of different things. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time in the tone curve simply because I really feel like I need to come back into a deep dive just on that. But I wanted to point out, especially, you know, highlights and shadows is pretty normal, but the temperature slider, I think that's pretty cool when that comes into play. Now there's more, let's just keep going. Color, hey Jim, there's no color. Why do I even care about that? Because in the advanced settings, right? If you open color, it looks like that. You click on advanced settings. Guess what you have? You have more luminance for these color channels. So once again, red, uh, let's say luminance higher. Look at that building's getting brighter. There's orange, let's see what that does. Luminance, getting higher. Uh, yellow, luminance, getting higher. Let's go to blue. Let's take luminance down. Uh, let's, that was aqua, let's try it here with blue. Yeah, look at that. So if you do that and you start doing this kind of stuff, you can see that very quickly, you can get like that dark sky kind of look that you might see in some of the uh, uh, black and white images where you see like a really cool scene, but the sky is black. That is a way to do that. So keep in mind, even though you don't have any color in the photo, you can still play with the luminance of the color channels in this color uh, tool here, despite the fact that you've already done that in the black and white conversion tool. So that's just something else to keep thinking about. Now, if you pop over here to creative, now having, having shown you this, I wanna, I wanna point out, you can basically use any filter on a black and white image, it doesn't matter. So this video is not, here's the ones you should use, or these are the only ones that work or make sense. This is your toolbox, you just play with it how you like. I'm just pointing out some of the things that I think uh, are interesting in monochromes, and hopefully they're things that maybe you haven't thought of, so they give you some ideas and spark some creativity in you. Um, Dramatic is a great one, absolutely love that filter and I love how it pops the detail here. And it also creates a little bit of noise in the sky. That's another thing, in a color image, I hate noisy skies. In a black and white, it's a little bit like film grain, which is, by the way, a filter down here you can go use. I probably uh, rarely would use that, but it's an idea. So dramatic is another one to keep in, uh, keep in mind. Matte look, this I think looks pretty cool because you come in here, you do a little fade, you maybe change some contrast, and look at that, there's the before, right? Pretty uh, kind of normal looking black and white. And after, a little bit faded, a little bit vintage, a little kind of cool. So that's what matte look does. Again, I think a matte look is fading out some of the colors, but it's also working with the tones, which I think is great. Mystical, right? So that's image radiance, just adds that lovely romantic glow. And if you come down here, warmth, guess what? Yeah, that's right. If you make it more blue, you're gonna make that sky darker, right? So. Um, just another idea for you. Color styles or LUTs. I mean, like LUTs are crazy. You could go through all of these because what they're doing is they're impacting color and tone. And if you go through and just hover over these, you can just see that it has an impact on the photos. So I'll probably come back and talk about LUTs in a separate video, uh, but just keep in mind, LUTs are applicable to any photo color or not. 
Texture overlay, same thing. I'm gonna come back and do a deep dive on that, but for now, you can add textures to anything and they can look really cool on monochrome photos. Um, glow, I don't really use film grain or fog, but that's okay. Popping over to portrait, I would definitely use Orton effect and it does that super romantic kind of moody lighting, which guess what? A monochrome is super like romantic moody lighting because color's gone and so you don't have that visual sugar high of wow, look at my blues or look at how great this color is or how saturated my image is, which I love, just to be clear, I love that sugar high, like sugar's a food group to me. Um, I just adore photos that are big in color, as you probably know, but um, Orton Effect, which I use a lot on cityscapes and landscapes, looks great on a monochrome because it adds some of that kind of romantic moodiness, which I just think is awesome. Now, here we go. This one is something I wasn't really thinking about, but advanced contrast makes perfect sense. I mean, gosh, what do you do with a black and white? Uh, after you do it, you go change contrast. And what's a well-known technique in monochrome photos? High contrast black and white. Hey, Jim, ding, go use the advanced contrast filter. You know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna drag highlights, mid-tones, and watch shadows. Look what it does to shadows, right? Because I'm creating more contrast in each of these tonal areas. So when I do that in the shadows, it's creating more contrast, which is con which is the difference between the dark and the light. And in the shadows, when I did that, coupled with the highlights and midtones, look at what it did to the light and the photo. It basically flipped it, right? A little bit brighter sky, a little bit darker foreground, and the reverse is true. To me, this looks like an infrared, black and white, right? So people do infrareds and you see them with the grass and the palm trees that are like really white and uh, the sky, the blue sky is basically black. There you go, you could take that and then go back over here, take some temperature and start doing this kind of stuff and then maybe take the highlights up, maybe the shadows, maybe a little AI enhance. I don't know, I'm just kind of winging it here. But look at that, I mean, you get some really cool stuff. That's probably not exactly the look I'd go for, but the point is, the, the options for creative outputs here are just massive. And, and I love this look. I think it's really cool, personally. Um, I don't have a camera that's been converted to infrared, but I have friends that do, and every time I see the photos, I'm like, damn it, that's pretty cool. So um, here's a, it's, it's, you know, I'll call it a pseudo infrared, right? But it's kind of got that infrared look, so I think it's pretty cool. Okay, let me reset that. And color enhancer. Similar to the color filter on the first tab. You might think, I don't need to mess with colors. There's no color in the photo, but there is temperature and tone. And if you look at the warmth, look at that. I'm adjusting the tones because I'm going blue. You know, I'm, doing, I'm, I'm making it cooler or warmer. Color contrast. Now, if you haven't used color contrast, you pick a hue and then you drag the amount of contrast you want in that hue. So here, I'm in the warm tones. I want higher contrast in the warm tones. Look what it does to the photo creates higher contrast between the warm and the cool tones. The warm tones get brighter. The cool tones, which are the opposite, get darker, and that's how color contrast works. So if I take it to blue, I get the opposite. Again, just fun, funky kind of stuff. Photo filter, you can just kind of pick a hue here and just drag and, and do something. And if you've seen my other monochrome videos, you know I kind of love that silvery moonlight. And there's a great way to do it right there in photo filter. And that takes me to my last one, which is split toning. Again, I might want that silvery moonlight kind of look. I'll just take the hue over here to kind of the blue area and then the saturation for both. And I kind of need to mess with this a little bit to get it right, but maybe something like that. Uh, that's kind of a silvery moonlight look. And then, you know what? Maybe you go back and maybe you create some more contrast. Um, I don't know. I'm just kind of making this up, friends. I'm just trying to give you some ideas. I don't know, it looks okay, it's interesting, it's different, it's kind of fun, but um, I don't know if that's the exact look I'd go for, but these are just all ideas for using all the various filter, not all of them, but a lot of the other filters or tools that exist in Luminar 4, and coupling those with the monochrome to come up with something that's unique, different, dramatic, and maybe something that you never would have thought of before. And uh, you know, so to me, like my eyes have been open recently as I've been experimenting and playing with more monochromes because I've always thought, as I said at the beginning of this video, well, you know, you just take the color away and you add some contrast, maybe pop a little bit of detail, massage the light a little bit, light, you know, highlights and shadows, and you're done. Not even close. There's so much you can do. Hopefully, this is giving you some ideas. And um, that's a deep dive on the black and white conversion filter, my friends. I hope you like this, and if you do, please give me a like, give me a thumbs up, give me a share, 
<coughs> give me a cough, um, and uh, give me a comment. Let me know what you think about it, and hit that subscribe button and keep coming back. I got more to talk about. I'm just having fun. I hope you're having fun. If you're not having fun, I truly believe if we're not having fun, we're doing something wrong. So let's have fun. Hope you're having fun. I hope this gave you some ideas. Thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. It means a lot to me. I'll see you soon, my friends. Have a great day. Take care and adios.